everyone, it's Robin Riley for Del Bellows Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial. Today I want to show you how I created this card, which I am calling Living in Harmony. This is considered a slimline card. Now before I get into all of the supplies and the details, I want to take a moment to invite you to our Facebook groups. We have two Facebook groups. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge. That's where we showcase all of the Lavinia products. We also have the Del Bellos Design a la carte page. There we showcase all of those other items, such as the stamps from Cardio and the stencils, Nellie's, along with all of the products from Sweet Poppy. Please join both of those groups and share your creations with us. We are on other social media platforms, such as Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And if you want to find us there, all you have to do is search hashtag Del Bellos Designs. Okay, like I was saying, this is considered a slimline card. A slimline card measures four inches by nine and a quarter inch. This size of card will fit very easily into a business size envelope. So you don't have to get anything special once you finish the card. Let's look at the supplies. Like I just said, this is considered a slimline card with the measurements of four inches by nine and a quarter. And today I am going to be using a watercolor card. Now with watercolor card, each side is a tad bit different. Typically, one side is smoother than the other. And you want to use the side that is the smoothest, especially for stamping. The, the area that is, I don't want to say it's bumpy because when you feel it, it's smooth. But there's what is called tooth in there. And it's just the based on the process of creating the paper, it gets a little bit of a patterning, patterning effect. So look at your watercolor card and remember to just use the smooth side when stamping. Now the base of the card will measure eight inches by nine and a quarter inch and it is scored right at the four inch mark. Now with the slimline cards, you can either make them vertical or horizontal, just like you do all the other cards. The inks that I use to create this background are distressed oxides in scattered straw, dried marigold, saltwater taffy, and frayed burlap. I will be using matching blending brushes you use what you like to blend with. We all have our different likes in that area. The stamps were all stamped in the VersaFine Claire Pinecone. The stamps that I used are the Owls from our newest release. This is Irwin, LAV801. I think he is very distinguished. Here we have Gus. LAV 800. Gus has a little attitude, doesn't he? But you gotta love him. Then there's Ginger, who I think wins in the attitude ca category. She definitely has it going on. LAV 799. And then the little owlet, Bijou, LAV 798. He's just darling. The word harmony that I stamped comes from the harmony stamp set LAV 815. I will also be using to color in the different colors of the owl, the Sweet Poppy Watercolor Fine Tip Brush Pens. These are a beautiful set of 24 watercolor pens. You get a nice variety of colors in each set along with two of these water brush pens. The colors work well and blend well. And what's missing here are the ones that I'm going to be using when I paint the inside of the owls. The other thing I'll be using will be a white gel pen so that I can highlight the eyes. I will be using my Misty stamping tool. And I believe 
that's all. If there's something I forgot along the way, I will make sure to mention it. And as always, in the description box below, you will find all of the supplies that I used. So let's get started. I'm going to bring in our what my watercolor card. Got a mark on the back here, so I'm going to flip on this side. Blending can be intimidating to people, and I want to show you how I've learned to do it. So being that this is four inches wide and I'm using four different colors of oxide inks, I want to make each strip of ink approximately one inch wide. I load up my brush with the ink. I start off on my work surface and in a circular motion, I bring my ink down over the card. The first layer is actually the hardest layer to put on. Take your time. I like to go clockwise and counterclockwise when I apply the ink. To me, I feel like I get more of the ink from the brush by doing that. Okay. Now we're going to move right on to the next color, which is the dried marigold. Loading up my brush again trying to create a one inch strip. I'm going to work my way down the paper in a circular motion and I am slightly overlapping the edge of the scattered straw ink. I'm not too worried that this is a little wonky looking, the lines here, because once it's all blended together, you're really not going to notice that. And like I said, I'm just trying to get about a one inch strip over this. All right, I'm gonna scoot back up to the top. Now at this point, what I like to do is I repeat myself. I go back with the scattered straw and I immediately add another layer of that ink and I go right on top of the join of the two colors. And you can see already a blending take place. Now with oxide inks, typically they're pretty wet. They blend very smoothly. The trick, I believe, is just to be patient. Keeping in mind, this is a saltwater taffy, by the way. Keeping in mind that one layer is never going to be enough. You want to apply at least, I wanna say three layers sometimes even four layers. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm, I just grabbed a scrap card. I'm going to place it over the wet ink, hold my card in place. Our fingers have oil in them, and you don't want that oil to transfer into the ink and lift some of that ink. So this is just an easy way to do it. A lot of people like to use a piece of acetate for this. That works just as well. The only thing I can suggest is you keep the edge of that scrap card or acetate away from where you're applying the ink because you do not want to create a line because that line will be virtually impossible to get rid of. So here I am just adding that pink pretty randomly Again, in a circular motion, not too concerned about any marbling or unevenness. Now, just like I did, like I did with the yellow, I'm going to come back in with that dried marigold, and I'm going to blend over these two colors. I'm trying to create a nice flow of the color into each other. I don't want to have a distinct line. I want a nice blend. And this is where practice comes into play. You just need to practice this. Be patient with yourself and remember multiple layers. Now the frayed burlap, this is a really unique color. I, I think it's underrated. I think it's a really pretty shade. Now this is unusual putting a dark color up against a light color. So I'm gonna to try to apply a light coat of this. I don't want it to be too overbearing, 
but if I tend to get too dark, you know what, it's really going to work out okay, because a lot of the stamping is going to cover up the join of these two colors here, the saltwater taffy and the frayed burlap. So it is a little forgiving, I must admit. Okay, so continuing on, again, you can see how obvious that th there's not a good blend just happening here between these last two colors. So what I want to do is come in now with a heavy hand with the saltwater taffy and try to get a de halfway decent blend here. So... I am rushing because I don't want this video to go way too long. You take your time when you're doing this. You'll be a lot neater if you do so. And you will definitely get a better result. Now there's a little bit of blending going on. It's not bad. Not bad at all. But at this point, what I would do is repeat this entire process. Add more scattered straw dried marigold, blend the two. Add the saltwater taffy, blend the marigold and the taffy. Add another layer of frayed burlap and then blend the taffy with the burlap. Again, I would repeat the entire process. That would be three times. And if I was satisfied, I would stop there. If not, I would add another one. Now, think about your weather because if it's humid, it's going to take a little longer for this to set and dry. And the longer you let it set and dry, the better the blend is going to appear. But to save some time, I've already gone ahead and I have one ready to go. So let me remove my Distress Oxides and my brushes. I want to clean off my work surface here a tad bit. Do a quick wipe down. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my Misty in. Now, as you can see, my I have the original Misty. You can get a larger version and you can get a smaller version, but you know what, this works for me. So I can still let this hang off a little bit. I'm just trying to get this even on here. I am not going to bend my paper by doing this. I do want to make sure though that it's held down well. Now my first stamp is going to be Irwin and I want to center Irwin on my card. So right about there is going to be the center now I have to apologize, my VersaFine Claire Pinecone is really, really dry. So this is going to take several stampings for me to get the result that I want. But I want to show though, this will really demonstrate how well a Misty works because then you, you can do multiple stamps of the same image and get it in the same place. Okay, so now that I have him inked up well, I'm going to press him into the card. Now, every any time you press a VersaFine Claire ink over top of a Distress Oxide, the VersaFine is going to be a little bit muted. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you have a super juicy brand new pad, you won't notice it as much. And mine's coming to an end. Okay, that's pretty light, as you can see. So what I can do, because I'm using the Misty, I can apply another layer of ink. And hopefully get a darker print. Now, I like to use an air hockey puck. That helps me give even more pressure over the top of the Misty so that I can get a darker outcome. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at that because I am going to paint over top of that. So that will help create some darker images there. 
Let me get the give this a real quick clean off. All I'm using is stray water and a cloth. Try to use a cloth that doesn't leave any fibers behind. Microfiber works great in this case. Okay, the next stamp is going to be good old Gus. I'm just going to reposition my paper to an area where I can fit this well. Now I'm going to need a little more room here, so I'm gonna move him down, place him where I think he's going to fit well. What I wanna do is grab the piece of acetate from the little outlet bijou. And what I'm going to do is just kind of hold it over so I can see that I have enough room to stamp Bijou without crowding him. So that looks like it's going to work well. Let me get another, another magnet there. Now, I'm getting, I don't know if you noticed that, but I'm getting a little bit of marking and it's because I'm not letting everything dry. You should really let each of these elements dry as you work with them. And like I was saying, humidity affects all that. Um, oxides take a little longer to dry typically, especially during the summer months. All right, so let's get Gus in place. Gonna bring my tool in and give it a good rub. And I'm sure I'm going to have to stamp again because of my dry ink pad. So you can see the benefits of having a Misty for sure at this point. And let's give him a good press. Okay, I'll be satisfied with that. And the last one I want to get on here for you, let me get him cleaned off first, is we're going to place little Bijou here. All right. Now Bijou's going to go in between. And I just, I'm not masking anything off because this works without the mask. There's very little overlapping that takes place and what does overlap is minimal and it doesn't affect the outcome. Okay, I wanna get this a little closer. Adding my ink again. And then putting this little guy in between. All right. Let's see how that worked out. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do one more. One more of this image. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. All right, so what you want to do is repeat this process now with the other owl. You will bring in Ginger. Let me grab Ginger. Ginger will be stamped here. Use the acetate sheet again to make sure you have enough space for Bijou. And in my original, you can see how I lowered. I didn't keep them at the same height. I lowered him, kind of given the effect that possibly they're not the same, even though they look identical. But it kind of gives that illusion, I think. So for the sake of time, I went ahead and I have already stamped all of the owls onto a sheet. And at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I use the Sweet Poppy watercolor brushes. Now, depending on the colors you use, if you use exactly what I do, then you'll be able to find really good matches. And I am just going to paint the areas that are yellow with yellow. And this yellow, particular yellow, 
comes from set one. You can see that here on the number. And all I did was try to match up the best I could. So the only areas that are going to be painted yellow are the areas in which I see yellow. I'm putting this here to keep my hand from smudging any of the wet ink. You can see how easily this, wa this watercolor flows from these pens. All I am doing is dabbing straight up and down and I'm getting a nice even coat. The VersaFine Claire has already dried, so I don't have to worry about any type of bleeding going on here. Okay, so right now, that's really all the yellow I am seeing. So I'm going to come in with what I thought was a good match. Again, this is from set one. And I'm going to color, or I should say paint, those areas that fall within the orange. Now you can see I'm not going, I'm not being really that careful. I am just painting with nice short strokes the areas that are orange. I do like to turn my work. Adding the orange here and there, and I'm always pushing it outward as you can see. Now, there is a little orange here within this area, so I'm going to trace that. Same thing here, trace that. And then for me, it appears as if now it's starting to be a very, very light pink. So that's when I'm going to switch over to the light pink, and this came from set one also. And I'll just continue adding these colors by dabbing the color into the area. You can see how easy this is. And really, I mean, no real painting skills have to be involved. You can see how quickly I'm adding this color and it's bringing more of this color to life on the bird. All right. For me, that's about all of the pink that I'm seeing. Now you can go back, if you wanted to blend some of that pink into the orange that I used, super simple to do. You just put it on top and they blend quickly together. It's really nice and it's so easy to do. Okay, so now looks like I'm out of pink. I couldn't find a super good color to match the burlap. So I just went with the gray and decided that what I was going to do was simply add the shadowing with the gray. And I think that was effective. I didn't want to use a dark brown because what that was going to do is just make everything way too dark in this area. Again, all I am doing is pulling the pen down over those lines that are already within the stamp. That helps with the shading. Same thing here, there's some darker areas and I'm going to just add some of that. Now using this, oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch over to a really dark brown and this came from set two. And with this, what I do is I am just very gently going to flick the dark brown over the areas that really didn't stamp that well. And it's just gonna make, you can see how this side, if you look, this left side pops a little bit more than the right side. So again, just tiny little flicks I'm adding under the eyes, and then I like to give the appearance of eyebrows here. I darken that area. Again, the stamp has all the dark areas for you to follow. You just need to pick the ones you want to follow. Now, around the eyes, I want to, I really want to highlight the eyes, so I want this area to be nice and solid. 
Same thing with the eye itself. I want this eye to really stand out. And you know how owls have the most magnificent eyes. So I want to darken that. And look at that. Just a little bit of that watercolor really made a difference in that eye. Same thing on the nose. Just add a little bit. Then I'm going to do that process of flicking just around the eye. Gonna trace underneath. This helps, and even over the top, this helps add some dimension to the owl itself. All right, I'm seeing a little more white here. I wanna cover that up. And one last eye. Now you're gonna take your time. You're not gonna rush as much as I am, but I just don't want this video to go on so long that you are bored to death. Now with this same brown, I wanna add some dimension in his chest. So what I'm going to do is just tap some color under some of those pink leaves, and that makes the pink area look like it's lifted. Can add some more here, and I'm even gonna go over this with some brown. I think that's going to give me another lift in that area. You could play with this for as long as you want, and I am, somewhat apologizing to you that I'm rushing through this. I just want to give you the basics on how this works and how I do it. And then you do it your way and please take your time. Don't rush like me. Okay. So I could play with this over and over and over until I get the depth that I want. I don't want to bore you with me coloring anymore. So all you do is continue in the same manner. The areas that are lying in the yellow, you use the yellow watercolor brush and just tap the color in. Same thing with the orange, pink, and the brown. Maybe you have a watercolor that would match the frayed burlap better than I did. Lastly, I had just stamped Harmony very quickly there. And the card is basically done. Now, the last thing you want to do is add your highlights. And let me just show you on one owl how I did that. Now, working on oxides, wet, as soon as they get wet, they tend to bleed. So you may have to apply one or two coats of white if that color bleeds through. And I can see a little bit of bleeding taking place right now. So you add the highlights in areas that you want to pop. Do a little bit on his nose. You could either get like really detailed and go into the feathers if you would like. That would be, that would be fun to do and it would cause a, create a lot of dimension. But that's basically basically how easy this is to create. So you would continue on, you would paint the rest of your owls, go in with the white, I'll give another coat here. You'll get a brighter result of the white. And there you have it. Here's the original. So you can see where I have taken the paint and finished each one of the owls. And I think it's just a, I think it's a fun, easy way to paint is with these Sweet Poppy watercolor pens. Now, one more thing I want to tell you is if I, this is what I do. This background, I really love the color combination of the oxides. So what I do is I take a ATC card, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. And I add the colors to this card, and then I file this away in a notebook. And I put the names of everything on the back so I know what colors I used. And then when I'm stuck for a choice of colors, I go through my notebook and I look for a color combination that sparks my interest. So it's just a little tip of how you can create a nice index of colors and it's just fun making those types of swatches. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this.
I hope I was able to break this up and not bore you with too much of the detail. If you give this a go, please tag me. Share your work with all of us in the group. We would love to see what you do. Most of all, make sure you have fun in the process. And please don't get frustrated with blending. It takes time and it takes practice. So give yourself that time. Okay, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me again. This is a PS to my video. I didn't actually finish the card with you. So the very last step is to adhere your slimline card topper to the card base. All I did was fold this in half on the score line using my finger. You can use a bone folder if you would like to get a nice crease. And using the Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Adhesive, I'm going to adhere my card topper to the base of the card. When I apply the ink, it's a nice thin, or apply the glue, it's a nice thin line of glue. I don't go to the very edge because I don't want it to ooze out. And I simply put it on the card topper. These are the easy ones. You don't have to worry about centering anything. And there you have it. Now you see the final end result of living in harmony. Thanks again. Bye-bye.